you had pork fest. Yeah, they gave you that. He walked by us, and I was like, I "How do you think it went?" Law enforcement. Does that mean I should be able to do uh, whatever I want? There was there was so much that they wouldn't allow to be on the record. I mean, and that's how courts work. If we were just to sit down and have a conversation as individuals about a dispute, there'd be a much different result when we'd realize that nobody was wronged. That this is all just a sort of uh, legal misunderstanding relative to a case that was thrown out last year. Break down it's the legal misunderstanding for us in two sentences. Make it simple for us. What happened here? There is no way to break this down into two sentences Do because the legal life of Graham Coulson is that complicated. He's, he's had Make so many Make it simple different... for us. What, what happened here today? What was it about? This was about whether or not uh, someone said something in passing to someone as they walked down the street and the court ruled uh, Basically, whether or not that was any sort of offensive action or whether that was harmful of anyone, that since the court decreed that that would not happen, that uh, there is no way around that. Even if it was a condition of a case that was thrown out previously is unconstitutional. Um, yeah, that, that's what happened. Now, All it's right. interesting in talking to uh, some of the Keene police prosecutors afterwards, including some of the KPD officers, they brought up, well, there are similar cases to this when people are arrested for domestic violence and then the party of the domestic violence dr uh, drops the charge and they had a no contact order in between that time period they can still be charged with that no contact order if they violate it even if the original charge is dropped however that is totally separate from this case because in this case we're dealing with a constitutional order um, a, 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 an order that was thrown out as unconstitutional not an allegation that was withdrawn because I mean and that specifically is dealing with violence like whether or not violence occurred um, so in this case, we're dealing with whether or not someone was in public. That's what Graham was initially charged with, being in public. Being on Central Square. He had a no trespass order that was illegitimate, that uh, was given to him. And it had since been uh, thrown away. Uh, it's since been ruled by this court as unconstitutional. However, the conditions applied to him while he was on bail for that case before it was ruled unconstitutional um, still were used against him. So he allegedly spoke to uh, an employee of the parking department, somebody he knows well, someone uh, that had tried previously on two separate occasions to have uh, orders against Graham so that he couldn't be within a certain proximity of him. Both he tried for a restraining order that was denied, and he also uh, was party of a lawsuit by the city of Keene against Graham and some others. And who was that who just walked by us? Um, that was uh, the Keene Police Prosecution Team, Gene Killam, uh, Jason Short as a KPD officer and, and prosecutor. Um, now here in New Hampshire there's this thing called police prosecution, which means that while the Keene Police do have an attorney that works in their office, uh, there is also um, individual officers that you'll see on the beat sometimes, you'll see them walking around in full uniform, but then you'll also see them in court prosecuting cases and offering people plea deals. Um, and that's very strange. It seems like there should be some level of separation between the police and the prosecution because uh, that enables for there to be an objective third party that is going forward with the evidence that the police bring. However, the way it's structured now, the same people that are collecting the evidence against people are also using that evidence to prosecute people. And I think it creates an, an environment of bias. Um, I think it, it, it presented itself in this case. We had all the people uh, going against this one individual, the defendant, were all agents of the state, all employed by the Keene Police Department. And, um, of course, a group that has tried in numerous ways, on numerous occasions, spent thousands of dollars on this client alone, um, just trying to get him and his free speech away from them. And in this case, unfortunately, the judges ruled that they were permitted in this case to uh, eject Graham's free speech from their zone, and that at the time it was legitimate. Now, it sounds like there won't be an imposition of a further no-contact order. Um, I didn't hear the judge say anything about that today. He just imposed uh, jail sentences, and he didn't impose any fines uh, in recognizing that the defendant has the inability to pay them. So um, I think it's unfortunate that jail had to come into the equation at all today. There is no need for the jail to be used to house people over whether or not they walked past someone and said something, or whether or not they resisted arrest by turning away and saying no when the police were approaching. I mean, th these are not... Um, these are not issues in our community, whether or not someone doesn't want to talk to the police. There's uh, no insinuation of anyone having been harmed in this instance, or even a threat to harm another. The only threats we see in this case were the ones that the judge prohibited from being brought up, which were uh, the ones directed against Mr. Coulson, that we have evidence of the witness in this case applauding. One of the um, things that I thought was interesting about this case was that the prosecutor seemed to use emotional appeals and quivered her voice at times when she felt, uh, I don't know, why what that was being done. Do you think that was a tactic that was being used to affect the judge and his decisions? 
Sure, yeah. Attorneys will employ these sorts of tactics of, um, you know, when they, when they ask a question. She sounded like if, she was crying. I, yeah, I don't know if I interpreted it quite when, that way. When she was talking about how uh, Graham thinks he is exempt from the laws and how uh, he's been punished several times before and he flagrantly violates the orders of the court, she was crying. Mm. Well, I, I guess there may be a feeling that uh, the Keene Police Prosecutor, I, I feel like they were uh, unprepared for this case. I mean, they were, of course, prepared enough to win it with uh, the basic argument that they had and all the objections that they had. But I don't feel that there has been a real delving into the information here. Um, Mr. Coulson and Mr. Gibbets don't have an adversarial relationship to the point that it is a public threat. I mean, we've been to court for this for three days in, uh, in this same well, building next door. And Alan the, just uh, walked Cheshire by, County right? Superior Court. I don't know, did he? Yeah. yeah sure, right. and it wasn't an issue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Earlier, you know, we, they, well, they, the they know each other. They have an established relationship that's, albeit they might not, uh, you know, have have great feelings for one another. It, they're civil. and Well, I'll tell you the way I see this. What happened here today is there's a member of the badge class, and he got upset that a member of the non-badge class uh, verbally expressed his opinions and the member of the badge class sought his buddies and his friends to use their guns and violence in courtrooms to threaten violence against Graham Coulson for simply speaking his mind. It's a crime against humanity that these people persist in caging peaceful people and I want it to end immediately.